Good afternoon, I am Spike welcoming you from within Trackmania and through YouTube. I've spent so many hours on this game and I can't get enough of it. And one of the big things, one of the things that keeps this game fresh always is its builder. So inevitably, also for you, the time will come when you want to click on this button here and see what you can do. Let me quietly disappear and then we shall actually click the button and see how you can build in Trackmania. So we click on create and choose the track editor and there we can make a new track. You can do that if you have standard access or club access. Let's wait a moment until everything is loaded and here we are. The good thing is that you can build like almost everything you want with this builder. And it would be so nice to know what everything does. So let's uh, look it up in the manual. Wait. There is no manual in this game. There really isn't. That's why I'm making this tutorial. Because the possibilities that you have here, all of the buttons to click on, uh, there is a certain logic in it, but it's just too much to know. Let's start at the beginning. What you see before you is the field on which you can build. You can build on almost every place until the edges. If I move my mouse, you see how far it reaches. If you take a block, you just go into the interface, you take a block, you click left and you place it. That's very nice, but it would be very unhappy and handy if that block is like at the far reach of uh, that plane where you can build on. So you can take the camera. If you hold Alt and drag the mouse, you can move yourself over the playing field. If you hold control and drag the right mouse button, you can rotate in every direction. So this little circle that you see here in the middle you move it with control and that's the center point around which you will rotate. Right? Now there's one more thing. When you hold Alt and you use the scroll wheel, you come closer and further so you can go deep into detail. Control Z or the undo button are super handy and they still work here you have them here as well undo last modification and redo that's ctrl z and ctrl y but let's begin with beginning placing blocks and that's very simple you have let's say let's just start where the game starts us and that's in this mode in block mode where you can go through all the different sets of blocks available at you. Let's take some uh, road blocks. I choose this one and I click and I've placed the road. There you go. There you go. I can also place with the space bar and move with the arrow keys. There we are. Now, if I'm gonna move down, I'm soon gonna be... My interface is gonna be in my way. I can fix that by moving aside, but I only have part of my screen available at me. Therefore, it's very handy to know that you can press tab and have the interface disappear with the last block you were using at hand. Now, 
I am in block mode, which means that if I effectively zoom the player up, zoom my level up, then I will place it in the air, but that is uh, the scroll wheel that I'm using right now, by the way. I use that to go up and down, and that's the level where you will place your blocks. That seemed like a better explanation than what I just tried to say. Anyway, I go up and I click. And there, you see what happens. It will place a platform under it so that it is not placed floating. That's why they call it block mode. So beautiful. You don't have to do that if like you want to build and build something where you can drive under then you go let's get the interface back then you choose ghost block mode and if now I place my blocks they float and I turn it off again and I place my blocks here and I built a nice little tunnel for my road I zoom down and I can drive straight through that. The third mode in here is free blocking. We're coming back to that. But first we need a track. You can only have a valid track if you have a start block and an end block. So let's uh, let's place one. You find a lot of star blocks, each in the style of the collection you're working in. We are working with road, so I can place a road star block. There we are. Let me place it for you. Whoops, what's going on here? Yes, you have seen that correctly. I have rotated my block. If you hold the block, you right click to turn it around. 90 degrees. Now I can place a finish block, so I move to this place and I place my finish block. The arrow is the direction in which you're supposed to drive through it and as a driver you can always ignore that. There we are, we have our first track. So easy. Now there is such a big collection of blocks at your availability. I'm not going to explain them all. You know how they work. Now, we want to make something a bit more sophisticated. Then maybe you want the block to be turned, but not perfectly by 90 degrees. For instance, you might decide that you want the finish a tiny bit tilted. So I delete the finish. I haven't shown you how you delete something yet. We take the eraser tool and we click. Or more efficiently, Alt X and click. Now, small rotations can be done if you move into free block mode. Now you see it doesn't move in shocks, it moves in the tiniest possible steps. It's not infinitely small, they are still small steps. Now you can still rotate with the right mouse button, but try the arrow buttons. Look what happens. Oh yes, what a beautiful finish this will be. Now I move my object down. And I can't see enough, so I will have it Alt to zoom in really close to see what I'm doing. I'm placing this here and it's still bad, so undo, tiny bit deeper yet, there. Now I'm happy, I have the perfect finish, everyone will hate me. Nice! You can 
rotate in three directions. And the arrow keys are very obvious. They go in six steps from vertical to three, four, five, six to horizontal. These go also in six steps. And you can go along the third axis, the vertical axis, with the plus and minus keys on your keyboard. Three, four, five, six. I can do this. There's a good chance you didn't know that one. So let us place, because we can, a second finish. And move it all the way down on the same level here. Hop. There you go. What a fascinating track I am making. So using all these options, I can make the most intricate tracks at my disposal. I can make jumps. I can do all the things. I'm not going to show you guys any of this because you know how to click and to place a block. There you are. So easy. What you need to do before I can now save this map. It's a good idea to do so. Look, I click save and it gives me a warning that I need to validate the map. You won't be able to drive it. But I can already save my work and call it an amazing job. There we go. Beautiful. This is my amazing job. Uh, remind me to never publish this. Now, if I want to share it with people and actually make this a drivable map, I have to validate this. I have to validate it for a very good reason. Because you never know that you made a mistake. Like for instance, you take this dirt block here and for some deep dark reason I choose to place it here. Like this. Mm. <laughs> Let's place one on top of it to make sure. Oh, if it tries to snap, you can undo that by holding shift. That's a very big one. There. What I have created now is an unfinishable map because you can't reach any of the finishes by driving. That's why validation exists. So I hold X and I delete those. Now I'm going to validate using the flag. But while you're making the map, if you want to test certain areas, you can go into test mode and place your car anywhere you like. I click and now I'm on the map. I see how it looks from my car. I can test it. It is indeed an amazing job. There we are now. Now we're on top of things. I'm sorry guys, I had to do it. You press escape to enter, to, uh, to leave that mode. And now let's actually validate it by clicking on the flag. Validate the track. You will start at the start and it's the same experience like you're doing an actual run. So now we will try to go as quickly as possible through our amazing track. Of course taking the difficult finish which in this case is also the slowest finish. But you see here I now have a new auto time which I can improve or I can exit. But the map is validated. The flag is green to indicate that. Before I save it, I want to make a nice thumbnail. The thumbnail of a map is what will appear when you publish your map. For instance, on Trackmania Exchange. And it's gonna take a standard thumbnail, but you can do that yourself. You go into Map Options, you do Edit Map Thumbnail, and you have like a camera 
now I can move with ref a right mouse button and with my arrow keys and you see in the left top of my screen that the thumbnail of this track will change let's make it really intriguing and I want to keep that as my thumbnail I simply click save and it remembers that thumbnail now I save the map and it will ask me to compute shadows if you really publish it you choose high otherwise you choose one of the faster methods but it's a simple map that will not take long for us and there we are now I can save my amazing job it already exists overwrite it yes if you're making a bigger project then it is advisable to uh, keep versions so that when you stray away from the chosen path you can uh, take a few steps back and redo it from there okay that's my map now some helpful uh, extras let's begin with actually not a helpful extra but some new information uh, all these standard blocks here allow you to really make a lot of things to make a cool map but you're still missing out of things you're still missing out of things and a lot of the possible scenery for this game is hidden as what they call custom items and therefore you have to go to item mode and these are the official built-in custom items and here you find your trees if you want to spam trees you can do it so here let's let's take this palm tree yes so i can click and really make my map so much nicer this is perfect you have a lot of nice lighting which can be interesting if you're going to build a night scene and the way it handles is sometimes the game will allow you to place multiple of these blocks you see it aligns here it snaps to the edges it allows you to place multi multiple of these blocks if you're in item mode if you're in free ground mode not you can free place them almost everywhere and if you want even more control you can once again go to the third mode and rotate the thing and make your map very weird indeed right one more thing here there is one very beautiful i have now rotated that tree tree in the game which is actually animated and drops leaves and all you see it's so beautiful uh, don't overuse that one because it uses a lot of resources and it will cost you frames custom the official custom items you can also download custom items from item exchange we're not going to talk about it now but let me just show you that that opens up a world of possibilities so many things here it's endless the trackmania community makes those and uh, yeah really provides you with more possibilities than you will ever have time for now one more thing that can be really useful is let's say there's there's this bobsleigh bo block over there i want to reuse it uh, where is it again i have to search for it through my interface and there's so many variations of a block that you might spend a lot of your time searching but if it's just on the map you can copy it 
with the picker tool and then you can place it wherever you want. Another way, and that's even more handy, is using uh, control. You hold control and you click a block and you pick it. So I place this. I place a road next. I can even pick this palm tree and it automatically switches me into this mode. I can place my palm tree. I want to place more of that again. So much dirt and I place my palm tree on a stone road. Brilliant mapping. And then there's a big one that I only recently learned and I've been building for a year. Imagine I want to build a wall around my map. A wall of, oh, let's say. There's a nice block here. Wait. A wall of these. Let's move up. Look here. So beautiful. Oh, by the way, I needed to show you this. You can choose colors. I can have these in white. Or in green. You know. I'm not going to show you all the colors. But that's the option that you have. Well, if I want to place a wall, I have to click. Then move and click. Move and click. I get out of the image. I drag, I move and click, etc. But if you're in block mode and only if you're in block mode, you can place your mouse where you want to put it. Hold space. Look at it. It's amazing. I almost forgot to tell you about signs. In the game you have a uh, you've seen these before. You can place signs on your maps and you have uh, two options for that you get them from this menu here and i had better place them in ghost block mode like this or you go to your official custom items where you have the much smaller versions at your disposal i mean really small you can edit these signs yourselves I'm going to show you the most easy way to do that. You go into the skinning mode. And now everything that can be skinned will like be activated. Uh, I see a number of things. I see these here. Those lights. You can give the lights a color. If you click on a sign. You have some more options. For instance. I want to give it the summer theme. And I can add an animation. No, that's not the same. I choose the summer team. And where it says plus, you overlay something on it. For instance, point down. Use it to indicate the direction. This has not a lot of contrast. But I can add my favorite effect to it. You can even select a URL of an image file that is online and have that image on your sign we're not going to do that now i can also do that for the smaller one like for instance say valley and point right you can also turn it off and then i have just a nicer bigger arrow pointing right with very good contrast there we are Okay now, even though the map is validated and all, there is one important thing that I didn't tell you guys yet, and that's uh, the use of checkpoints. You find checkpoints if you go to items, and in the official items you find your checkpoints here, or you find your checkpoints with like each of a uh, the surface collection that you have for instance that's the standard way of doing it that's the dirt checkpoint let's undo that we were building a road so we can simply make a road checkpoint let's uh, place one here there we are 
checkpoints are useful to prevent cuts and also to allow people to respawn and make it a bit easier to finish your map if you make a difficult map. Let's place one of the newer checkpoints that have actually come with one of the latest updates. As these guys are a, a bit more versatile, they're nicer and especially like there's nothing on the road, nothing in your way. But that could actually make it interesting. That means that now when I do my validation run, I will have a split times and I now have the most perfect map. I'm going to have to revalidate it. And that was my map. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was my quick tutorial. If you have questions or if you want to know more, let me know in the comments. I almost forgot it. This is a YouTube thing. Uh, like, comment and subscribe. Choose one or do all of it. I don't know how this works. Tell your friends. Anyway, spike out. Have a good one, guys.